So how can you find abandoned buildings to explore? Well, stick around because in today's video, I'm gonna show you seven ways that you can implement to help find abandoned buildings to explore. Let's get right into it. Number one, Google image search. I would say a good chunk of the abandoned buildings that I've explored here on my channel simply came from going to Google and just typing in abandoned buildings near and then type in your city and state. So for example, this weekend I'm going to Flagstaff, Arizona. So I would type in abandoned buildings near Flagstaff, Arizona. And when I keyed that in, I got an enormous amount of search results. And then from there, you can usually kind of get a good idea of what type of structures are relevant to the area. Now, just because you keyed in a place and you found a photo on Google, that doesn't exactly mean that they're going to give you the exact location, but sometimes they will. There is multiple times where you're gonna have to kind of do your own homework, and if you find the photo, but you can't find the address, you're gonna have to look for clues in the background, such as maybe mountains, is it in town, is it out in the desert, is there street signs, or just any sort of significant landmarks in that photo that you can use to kind of help find out where that location. But don't be too disappointed because that's part of the adventure. Number two, YouTube. Now this method is very similar to the Google image search, but there is one key strategy I'm gonna help you out with. So for example, if I YouTube search abandoned buildings near Las Vegas, Nevada, I can use the filter tool to see how old or how new it is. Now this is very important because there's definitely been a handful of times where I've gone on YouTube, Instagram, or Google, and I found a place and the exact address, but when I actually drive out there, it's gone. And being able to use that filter on YouTube to see how long it's been since someone has actually been out to that location will also let me know if it's worth driving out to. So for example, if there hasn't been a video upload on that location in about four to five years, probably not looking so good. But then again, if you refine that search and see when the most recent upload was, if it was within the last maybe four to six months, then I would say the chances of that abandoned building being there are probably good. Now, some abandoned buildings will last a long time, but you never know. Some just end up getting torn down because they've been proven to be a liability, while others just end up getting destroyed by vandals, not leaving a whole lot left for others to explore. You know who you are, you know. Number three is Google Maps. Now this way, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, it is a little more on the time consuming side, but it's definitely been proven to be effective. For me, living in Arizona, where I'll start is I'll just find some small town, you know, outside of the city, and from there I'll start zooming in. Now I've been doing this for a little while now, so when I zoom in on Google Maps, I can generally kinda tell if the place is abandoned just by taking a look at the property and seeing how well it's maintained and just kind of getting a feel for it, comparing it to other abandoned places that I've explored. Now, I will tell you this, I don't know how often Google Maps updates things. So like I said, there's times I've been to places and it's like, oh, hey, on Google Maps it was there, but when I get there, I'm screwed. So just keep that in mind. That is kind of a risk that you're taking when you're doing this, but it's all part of the fun. And for extra credit, what you can also do on Google Maps is they have a street view. So what you can do is if you think you found an abandoned building and you're like, okay, this is a good candidate. I'm sure it's abandoned. What you can do is grab the little guy and drop him in the street and it will actually give you a street view of what the place looks like. And you can do like a 360 degree view too. And it looks like as if it would if you were standing right there. But also keep in mind, it might not be updated, but at the same time, at least you can rule it out if it's abandoned or if it's not. So just another good tip. Also, a quick bonus tip, the Google Images Street View is probably only going to work if it's on a well-known paved road. If you find an abandoned building and there's like a gravel road right next to it, uh-uh, probably not going to work. Your best bet is just to find the nearest paved road and then do the Google Images Street View from there and then just kind of angle it at that abandoned building so that way you can see if it's abandoned or if it's occupied or if there's anything there at all. Number four, look for mining towns. A trend that I've noticed after living in Arizona for a while is that generally where there was once a mine active, usually not too far away and kind of within the vicinity, there's usually some old abandoned buildings that were left behind. And here's why. So the majority of the mining towns that I've explored were usually active sometime in the early 1900s all the way up until the mid 1900s. And once business at the mine just kind of declines, so does the population of the town leaving behind things such as homes, parks, schools, businesses, machinery from the mines, and the mines themselves. Now, the majority of those mines are going to be closed off anyway, so you wouldn't really want to go into them, even if you could, if you value your health. But whatever, do what you want to do. I'm not your mom. Long story short, if you're looking for abandoned buildings to explore, just go on the web and type in old mining towns near blank, 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 blank. You're bound to find something. Number five. Facebook groups. So I belong to three Facebook groups that encompasses urban exploring, and this can also be another great resource to help you find something. Now the majority of these Facebook groups are just pictures of people's findings and every once in a while video, but they're mainly picture oriented. 
Now I'm gonna be very upfront with you and I'm gonna tell you right here that the majority of the time people post these photos, they are not gonna post the exact location. But sometimes they might give hints like the city and the state, or sometimes they'll just post the state. Or if you're really lucky, sometimes they'll give you a really vague description such as abandoned cabin in the desert. Not a whole lot to go on, I know. Sometimes you're just gonna have to do your homework, but I am a firm believer that if you just one, do your research and two, use your Google Maps, you'll more than likely be able to find it. Now you might start to find yourself asking that popular question, why don't people just share the locations? What's the big deal? Well, I'm gonna answer that for you right now. The reason why a lot of people don't share locations is simply because they are trying to protect and preserve the place. I'm sure most people like you and me, you know, we just wanna go there to explore, take pictures, maybe put together a little YouTube video and try to imagine what these places looked like when they were occupied. Now that being said, there are also those douchebags out there that just seek to destroy by spray painting, smashing windows, shooting guns, partying, lighting off fireworks, you know the type. The type of people that just don't have any sort of regards towards other people's experiences and their visits. The more careless douchebags that we can keep out, the more we can preserve these precious gems for future generations to enjoy. And before we get to number six, I just wanna quickly say one thing. Always be respectful and don't trespass. If you do happen to come across an abandoned building and you do see that it's boarded up, don't rip off the boards. It's boarded up for a reason. That's considered destruction. Don't do it. And if you do happen to come across an abandoned building or a property that says don't trespass, well then you guessed it. Don't trespass. Now I always tell people feel free to get as close as you can as long as you're not going over a property line if there is one and if you see a fence, don't cross the fence. And if you happen to do see like a tree or a post and there's a sign on it that says don't trespass, then just don't go beyond that. Feel free to take your pictures or your videos from the sidewalk or from the public road or whatever public property that you're on. Just don't trespass. Now I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. There may have been a time where I may have wandered past a sign or wandered through a fence, but at the end of the day, I am willing to accept the consequences for my actions. And if you're doing that, that is all on you. I'm not responsible, I'm not putting you up to it. You are responsible for your own actions, so don't be stupid. Number six, just drive around. This is probably the easiest one out of all of them to do, and I've stumbled across many abandoned buildings this way. Now, I will go on record and say that this doesn't yield as many results as Facebook, YouTube, or Google, but some of the best abandoned buildings that I've stumbled across were simply from driving around. I've come across buildings ranging from bars to gas stations to shopping malls, a resort, and even a hotel. Well, actually three of them. There was like a chain of them along the highway in northern Arizona. And the gas station that I came across actually still had old Coke bottles and beer bottles in the refrigerator. Now, it definitely wasn't the most pleasant smell, but it was still really cool. Now, if you're like me and you live in the Southwest, I would start by, you know, driving around the outskirts of any small towns, big cities, and don't forget about those mining towns. Now, if you do live back in the Midwest, which is where I'm from originally, where there's a lot of farmland and cornfields, you really shouldn't have to drive too far for too long before you run into something. Now, I never started doing any urban exploring until I moved to Arizona, but thinking back on it now, I remember back when we were growing up as kids, we spent a lot of time driving out in the country, and I remember we always came across things such as old farmhouses, barns, shops, sheds, and even schoolhouses. Now, from what I remember, a lot of those places were either fenced off or they had signs that said, you know, no trespassing and private property. Now, a golden rule that I have, which I think is pretty universal with urban exploring, is if there isn't any no trespassing signs or private property signs posted and it's not fenced off, I consider that fair game to explore until someone asks you to leave. Now, if someone does ask you to leave, don't debate it, just respectfully leave, right? We're not out there to cause problems. Number seven, ask a local. I mean, after all, who would better know the area than someone who lives there? This has definitely led me to some pretty cool destinations, and the majority of the time I've asked a local, they're usually pretty cool with you know sharing the location and even sharing a little bit of history and the backstory on the place too. Now there will be times when you ask a local and they'll probably either one, have no freaking idea, or two, they probably just won't tell you, probably because they think you're up to no good, which is fair. Also, I have had a lot of success asking workers at hotels, gas stations, and even little mom and pop shops. Truth be told, they usually know where the best ones are. Now usually when I approach people, and this is a great trick that I use, but usually when I approach people, I'll say something like, hey, you know what, I'm not in town for very long, I'm just passing through. One of my hobbies is I like to take pictures of abandoned buildings and deserted places. Do you happen to know if there's any in the area? Now if they know of any in the area, then great, you're in luck. But if not, it's back to Google. Back to formula. 
All right, guys, be sure to let me know how you find abandoned buildings to explore, where you're from. I would love to hear about your techniques. If not, then oh well. Other than that, happy exploring, and uh, Epstein didn't kill himself.